Grubois. So we just did a one minute video where we talked about the different entity options. So let's take a step back. So we're creating a new company. And one of the very important things, and of course I'm a lawyer, so I'm telling you what I think is important, is that you create an entity. So you can just start doing business by yourself. That's called a sole proprietorship. Or you and somebody else or a couple other people can just start a business. That's called a partnership. And you know, with the sole proprietorship, obviously you don't need anything in writing. With the partnership, I highly recommend you put something in writing. But the problem with the sole proprietorship and the partnership is that you have what's called unlimited personal liability, which means that if something goes wrong, they can sue you for your personal assets, which then introduces the concept of limited liability. So what is limited liability? Limited liability says that all you can lose if everything goes wrong is whatever your investment in the company is. So here's an example. I buy stock of Coca-Cola on the stock market, right? Obviously it's gonna be a tiny itty bitty little share of Coca-Cola, but let's just use that as my example. So now I am a part owner of Coca-Cola. By the way, that's a corporation. And that's a corporation, it's publicly traded, it's on the New York Stock Exchange. And so what happens is if everything goes wrong and the whole business, like Coca-Cola ceases to exist and they file for bankruptcy and they have lots of creditors, all I lose is what I put into the stock. They're not gonna come after me as one of the owners and say, all right, Eric, you need to sell your car and you need to sell your vacation house and you need to empty your bank account and we're gonna garnish your wages, all right? So that is that would be called unlimited liability versus limited liability. So it's pretty easy to create a corporation or an LLC. So those are the two main options here in the United States for setting up your entity when you start doing business. And I will tell you, you should never do business as a sole proprietorship or as a partnership just create the LLC. In fact, a lot of times I use the word partner, right? So my partner, my partner. Well, technically my partner, he and I are shareholders in this corporation because this, this company is a corporation established under Florida law. That's really important. So the laws of businesses are state by state. So Delaware corporate law is different than Texas corporate law. And so when you're creating your company, you can choose which state. So there might be, especially for online or digital or virtual companies, people are using Wyoming. You know, the population of Wyoming is under 800,000. Nobody's in Wyoming. But the point is you can create a company there, same with Delaware, and there's a lot of pros and cons. So each state has different attributes. One of the main positives to Delaware, just for example, which is the most popular corporate state, is they have anonymity, so privacy. Your name is not gonna appear on the internet, unlike Florida, where your name is right there for the world to see. And also, there are really good corporate laws, so the laws and the they say they have the best lawyers, the best judges, the best laws. And then a lot of people who are gonna do VC or venture capital funding, they anticipate when I'm dealing with these Silicon Valley or Wall Street guys, they're gonna want me to be on a Delaware company. So well, let's just say that you create a Florida company and then you get to that VC stage, you can actually convert your Delaware or your Florida company into a Delaware company. And, and, and even you can convert from an LLC to a corporation. A lot of times when you get to the point where you're raising lots and lots of money, they're gonna want you to be a Delaware corporation. So you're picking what state. Again, I'm in Florida, so I picked Florida. Then you're basically picking between the LLC and the corporation. So let's break it down. So the corporation is the oldest form. It's very rigid, it has a lot of rules. The rules must be followed. If you don't follow the rules, that can be an excuse that a creditor could use to pierce the corporate veil. And that means that they're allowed to make the individual owners liable for the debts of the company, which defeats the entire purpose of limited liability. Now, if you're a rules person, then corporation is the, is the entity for you. I'm a rules person. So when I created EPGD, I did it under the corporate statute. Now I could have just as easily set it up under the LLC statute. My girlfriend, Dear De Niro, her law firm is set up under the Florida LLC statute. From the perspective of our customers, our landlord, our employees, basically anybody other than the partners and the government, they don't care, right? It doesn't matter if your paycheck comes from an LLC or comes from a corporation, and it doesn't matter if a corporation is providing the legal services or an LLC, it just doesn't matter. But who it matters to is internal. So. Basically, the LLC is a much easier, more flexible, less rigid, less rules. All the things you have to do with a corporation are suggestions for an LLC. So for example, every year for a corporation, you're supposed to have a annual meeting of the shareholders and an annual meeting of the board of directors, and you gotta keep written minutes or written consents of every one of those meetings. And it's gotta be kept in a physical book with a seal, with share certificates, with an ownership ledger, etc. All of that is optional for an LLC. So if you have an LLC and you don't have a meeting of the owners for five years, it doesn't matter. 
If you have a corporation, you don't have a meeting of the owners for five years. That could be a reason why a creditor could ask a judge to pierce the corporate veil and to make the owners of the corporation liable for the individual debts of the company, which again is unlimited liability versus limited liability. So guys, there's a lot to unravel here. Just take this takeaway. When you're starting your business, definitely create a company. It's certainly something you can try and do on your own. You can do it online in legal zoom, but it's better if you just work with a professional who can teach you the pros and cons of every different scenario. All right. Thanks guys.